So I thought this was an interesting little tidbit. This is my 2020 MacBook Air, uh, the M1 version. And this is the machine that I use for work, making videos, music production, for everything. With the exception of a server and a couple other things that I have got set up that work on other things. But this is the main machine that I use. And one of the features that I found in macOS Monterey that is this low power mode. And yes, low power mode has been available on iPhones for many years now, but I believe it was in this last update, um, iOS, what is it, iPad OS 15, and the desktop, Mac OS, that this low power mode became available. So to dive into this more, let's take a look on the computer. So here I am going over to system preferences and I'm just going over to the battery settings and here's the machine's been plugged in pretty much all day today. If I go over to battery or power adapter in this case for this particular device, I don't think this really applies for like desktop max. The option is there to turn on low power mode. And when you do that, nothing much really happens. You don't get any kind of thing that indicates a yellow battery like it does on the an iOS or on the iPad maybe, I don't know. Um, but I was curious what's actually happening here. Considering this is an M1 using Apple's silicon, that it has a certain number of efficiency cores, certain number of performance cores, and the way that it takes all the constituent components, that is a CPU, a GPU, machine learning, components, the image processing components, memory interfaces, and all of these things, and puts them together onto one system on chip, like we've seen with iPhones and iPads for many years as Apple has made their own silicon for those devices. I was curious what we would see on the desktop. And there are videos out there for M1 Pro and M1 Max based MacBook Pros that's a mouthful. I've seen videos done on that, but no one really has done a video on the low power mode and how it affects the first M1 base Max. And so that's what I wanted to take a quick look at today. So here we go, we turn it on. What am I gonna do to demonstrate this? Well, I could go through a whole bunch of different things in my workflow, but really, honestly, I spent a whole day with this thing in low power mode, and there were only maybe two or three times where I was like, oh right, it's in low power mode. And it was when I was doing heavier lifting in Xcode or I uh, was working in PyCharm or fired up Logic Pro and was trying to do stuff in Logic Pro that required plugins that needed the Rosetta framework, which leans pretty heavily on the performance cores because I think they're optimized or there's some optimization there. It still worked, but the performance was you notice the performance decrease a little bit. Let's try to quantify that. I can run a whole bunch of different benchmarks like you might see in other YouTube channels, but that's not my bag. So I'm gonna pick one that, uh, love it or hate it, it's one that most of us are aware of, and it will help demonstrate the various changes that happen when low power mode is enabled. So here we are in the Geekbench 5 CPU screen, and as you can see, it is showing like you might see typically if you have an Apple M1 based machine. I don't know what the Pro or Maxis look like, but it shows it at 3.2 gigahertz. That particular frequency is specific to the performance cores. And I can demonstrate that to you by going into power metrics. Oops, let me type in the right password. Which this is an Apple tool akin to Intel's power gadget that we're all familiar with that have want to play around with that sort of stuff and have used it. So this is kind of similar, but it's Apple's application. Here it is, and you can see that if you haven't seen it before, there are there are the four efficiency cores up here, and you can see it that shows the power being consumed and what each of the cores are doing, zero, one, two, and three. And then below it, there is the performance cores down here, and it shows what the active frequency is and what each of those four are doing, four, five, six, and seven. And if you come down here, you can see that there's totals for a variety of the different subsystems on the M1 system on chip. There's the machine learning accelerator, which is also the Apple Neural Engine, which is a 16 core machine learning accelerator. Uh, so that's got, it's not doing anything right now because it's 
nothing going on with that. There's how much power the, the actual onboard RAM is using, and then there's the CPU power, the GPU power, and the overall package power. And beneath this, strangely, is the GPU usage. I don't know why that isn't above this, but maybe they'll fix that in later, later versions. And it shows the, the GPU's active frequency, power consumption, etc. So why am I telling you all this? Because the second piece of this for demonstrating what happens in low power mode is going to rely on testing with handbrake. So the two things I'm going to be using are Geekbench and handbrake because Geekbench does a great job at short bursty showing you what you know going on if you're just running things for a short period of time and handbrake's great for just flat out using as much as the CPU as it possibly can. To save all of us time I'm going to <laughs> cut forward through the Geekbench but what I want to do is get a baseline and show what this machine is doing in normal operation. I'm going to run it and then we'll come back and I will show you the results. So in this particular run, it's recording audio and the screen screen capture. So this is a little bit lower than it might typically be, but whatever. It's 7332 multi-core and 1698 single core. Now, if I go back and turn low power mode on, let me minimize this. And if I turn on low power mode and I have to close Geekbench 5 first to show you something. Low power mode is now turned on. I then reopen Geekbench. Now you might see without me saying anything that something has changed. It now shows an Apple M1 at 1.95 gigahertz instead of 3.2 gigahertz. So again, that refers to the performance cores. They have been downclocked to 1.95 gigahertz. When I saw that, I was like, interesting. How much does the performance decrease? Let's run the benchmark again, and we'll see what the performance is on this M1 MacBook Air running in low power mode. This generated a single core score of 1,062 and a multi-core score of 3,567. You might look at that and say, well, that's quite a bit lower than with low power mode turned off. In multi-core, that is about 48% of the original performance. And in single core, that's about 62% of the normal performance. But here's the interesting bit. When running this, the package power, or rather the, the, the CPU power, since this is CPU testing, that reduces from about 15 to 18 watts down to no more than five watts. I might have seen it go a little higher than five, but basically it stays bang on at five watts. So that is a third of the usual amount of power that this system on chip is using. So it is getting for one third the amount of power that is consuming between 50 and 62% of the normal performance. That's pretty interesting. Again, we're talking about Geekbench, we're talking about bursty kind of non-continuous loads. I'm going to handbrake to look at what happens under a more sustained load. So for this, I'm going to take it off of low power mode. And we'll just let this sit here. So for handbrake, I need to give it something to, to chew on. Let's go into some movies that have already been done, like the last part of the Kasori teardown there. Let's see, it was just up here. So I'm gonna open that one up. And we're gonna make all this H265. So I'm hopping over here to video and we're gonna let this sit for a few minutes. This will be done in time-lapse, so you don't have to sit and watch this. So we're gonna give it until thermal equilibrium hits in power metrics. And I'll be looking at the power consumption and we'll see where it, it stabilizes out at. So I'll move this over here so you can see both running at the same time. And you can see this cranking away, re-encoding something that I've already encoded. But here we go, bam. And right away, power consumption should go up pretty high. 15.9 watts, 18.1, and all cores being, it's maxing out. Yep, so the performance cores are getting kind of warm. And we're hanging at about 18.469 milliwatts, or 18, 18 watts. I think it will start to come down off that 18 watts in a little while. All the performance cores are maxed out at 3.204 gigahertz. As you can see over here, they're spending all their time maxed out. 
And then up here, the efficiency cores are all at 2.063, and they're all maxed out at 99%. So I'm gonna let this go, and we'll let it go for about five minutes until we see stabilization. And also to watch the temperatures on the performance cores because it does have to back off the CPU a little bit. It's just most, basically the performance cores back off in their clock speed a little bit to accommodate the necessary thermal headroom that's now needed to bring everything back into alignment with the amount of heat that can be dissipated versus the amount of heat coming out of the system on chip. Okay, so we're just at about, well, I set a three minute timer, so I don't know <laughs> where, we're, where we're actually at, but you can see that the clock speeds are starting to back off of 3204. They're hanging at about 3.1 gigahertz, so they're coming off the, the peak that we saw of 3.204, and the po package power ha is hanging around 19 watts, and now you can see it backing off a bit more. Three, 3 gigahertz as it's saturating at I think about 100 degrees Celsius and so it'll start backing off. Actually, it doesn't go all the way up to 100. It, it seems to want to stay around 94, 95. So I think it's backing off slowly before it hits above that, that point. Hopefully you get the gist. We're at about 16, 17 watts over a longer duration test than just a quick Geekbench 5 run which if I look here, our iStat menus will tell me that we started at 440 and we're now at what? Uh, 448. You know, we'll let it go a good solid 10 minutes while I talk a little bit more. So we're still hanging in about 16, 17 watts with the total package at about 18.2. The clock speed has slowly coming down, 2.9. I've seen it, if I've let, let this run for a half an hour, 45 minutes, I've seen it that it, it will stabilize at around 2.7 to 2.8 gigahertz. It does take it a while to get to that point. Uh, but you can see that the temperature is stabilizing. Oop, it's stabilizing there. You can see that the efficiency cores are pretty much staying at about 75, 76 Celsius. So we're about 10 minutes in. I think that's uh, good enough to show what I'm trying to demonstrate here. So we can contrast that with what happens when we put it in low power mode. And all I've got to do to demonstrate that to you is it's still going. It's got about six minutes left. And I'm just gonna move this over here. And then I'm gonna come over to this little thing and I'm just gonna go boop and click the low power mode button. And we'll see what happens to the package power. Whoa, 13 watts. Three. <laughs> Four actually, sorry, 3.93. But suddenly we drop back down to about four watts. If you look up here, it's dropped off one of the performance cores entirely. This is interesting that the CPU pretty much is now at about 2.5 watts. The efficiency cores, um, I haven't showed the power for the efficiency cores, but it's not like it matters much because it doesn't change from performance to efficiency runs. They're running at their maximum clock rate frequency, 2.064, all four cores, 1.4 watts total. And it looks like that's pretty much what the performance cores are also limited to, which is about the same amount of power, 1.4 watts. And that brings them down to about 828 megahertz. So I found that interesting. I, I, it needs a little context to kind of bring it all together. It, it comes down to about four watts and uh, if you've got stuff that you need to, I don't know, you want to, you're running and you, you know it's going to take a while and you're not really wanting to burn the battery on your machine, you can actually put it into low power mode, have it run these things, and they still will run at about, on the CPU side, between 50 and 65% of its normal performance while using one third the power or less. And the system on chip is using about 22% of the power it usually is consuming for this particular CPU bound task. One thing I will note though, is doesn't mean that it's gonna linearly translate to more than four times the battery life. This is not gonna suddenly go from running 
15 to 17 hours on battery life to 60 to 70 hours on battery life because you still got to drive the display you still got to run all the other internal componentry and in this case I'm, I've got an external SSD attached so it's this doesn't go into low power mode this just stays running however it's been running so things to consider it is not going to be a complete linear scaling but especially in the case of the M1 it really does show how much it can decrease the power consumption but still retain to almost two-thirds of the original performance of the system. The one last thing I'll, I will demonstrate is the compute. And I were to run com the compute piece. I'm not gonna do the long duration stuff because I think we've already demonstrated what happened. If we run the compute benchmark, we're gonna run it now with low power mode turned off. Run that and then I'll show you the results from that. So here we go. Results for that. The metal score was 20,038, which I think is pretty much on par with what you'd expect for this M1 base machine with an eight core configuration. And now I will go and run it with the low power mode turned on. And that is 13,952. So that's 70% of the nominal performance when it's not running in low power mode. The GPU gets over two thirds of its performance while running in low power mode. The one final piece I wanted to show here is that it occurred to test this out actually while I was having a conversation with a friend about purchasing a new MacBook Pro. And the MacBook Pro that he currently has is a 2017 15 inch Core i7, seventh generation KB Lake 2.8 gigahertz machine, I think it's the, oh yeah, here, 7700 HQ. So it has four independent cores, but with hyper-threading, that appears as an eight core machine. I was curious, well, what's the performance of this machine using the same, again, using Geekbench 5 as a reference point? Its single core was 855 and multi-core was 3368. And so the interesting thing that I discovered was that the MacBook Air M1 running in low power mode actually outperforms that while using about five watts. And I had my friend send over his machine running Geekbench just to, just to show what the power consumed was using Intel's power gadget. And you can see here that it's, it's quite high. It's, it's way higher than the five watts. I just found this interesting, kind of demonstrate what's the relative performance between Intel-based Macs leading up to this transition and the M1 Macs that are out I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know what to do. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.